Hey everyone, welcome back to Tech DIY. In today's session, uh, today's playground session, we are going to see uh, Spring caching uh, with uh, EH Cache, which is a third-party cache. So, in today's session, we are going to refer the site how to do in Java uh, Spring EH Cache tutorial. So that's what uh, is shown on the screen currently. So basically, for starting with uh, we need to have the dependencies uh, one is starter spring boot starter cache and the other is uh, eh cache e eh cache dependency and the, and the third one is cache api which is a javax uh, dot cache uh, provider is java javax dot cache so that's pretty much about it and uh, yeah whatever con uh, annotations we have seen earlier in previous example like add enable add enable caching uh, and uh, uh, add cacheable those annotation are also going to we are also going to use here and then we are uh, going to have uh, uh, cache event listeners which we will configure for logging in this example and uh, again we will be taking the same blogging example wherein we are going to have a model blog model with its uh, id uh, title and uh, content so with this uh, let's get started so we are going to our launchpad that is start.spring.io and uh, we are just freezing the screen so that you can uh, note down the spring related uh, dependencies uh, which we are going to add from here so as you can see we have added lombok we have added spring cache abstraction that is nothing but starter cache and the third one is Spring Web. So simple REST APIs, uh, REST endpoints we will write and we will try to hit from Chrome. And uh, let's see the POM. So other dependencies which we need, which we required as we said earlier is EH Cache and Cache API. So we are going to add the EH Cache uh, dependency here in our POM. So EH Cache group ID should be org.eh Cache. And uh, and since we are using Spring Boot uh, version 2.4.4 and above, so with that the compatible EH Cache version is version 3.x and above. So yeah, that's what we are going to use. And the Cache API is again another uh, Java X uh, dot Cache group ID uh, dependency. And once we have added this, we need to build the project again. So as uh, may, we will do Maven uh, re-import for all the dependencies, so it will uh, load all the dependencies into our local uh, into our local repository folder. So yes, it's uh, it's been added now. And further, uh, we are going to create the full structure as we have done for all other. Yeah, before that, uh, we need to have uh, in our application YAML file we need to have this configuration which says uh, spring.cache.jcache.config uh, equal to class path. We need to have a XML configuration file in e, uh, which is ehcache.xml at this place. And uh, uh, under resources folder, this file would go. And now we have created the package structure. So we will be having config package. We will be having uh, uh, caching package. We will be having model. We will be having service. We will be having controller. So those are the very common uh, caches uh, we are going to use here. So so we are trying to create the eh cache dot example. So this part you can copy from uh, how to do in Java because they have given a sample uh, you know sample eh cache uh, code there. So we can straight away copy that and we can use it. Uh, now we are going to create the blog uh, model object uh, with uh, serial version ID as one uh, and having the data to string and uh, all arg and no arg constructors. So that's pretty much about it. And now we are going to have the eh cache dot example. We are manually uh, doing it. So we need to add the config tags under config tags. We need to add the proper uh, access D's, access uh, D's and uh, XML schemas. 
so yeah now we have added that uh, the jsr 107 defaults we need to enable the statistics so these are basically the configurations provided under that example we can see the further details over there uh, key type basically in our caching mechanism we will be having uh, key as a id as key and the corresponding object blog object as the value of that uh, of that key so that way in key value pair we will be storing our data uh, our resources so that's what we are doing here so key type is nothing but long since we are having the long as id as long and the uh, value type is again as i said uh, the blog uh, since our uh, use case is blogging so blog uh, model we are writing here and then we are setting some default settings like uh, how, how many seconds the cache will be available so we have set is 10000 seconds and uh, now we are adding the custom uh, custom cache uh, event listener uh, which will be under caching package and uh, these are the further events uh, events to fire so these are the events uh, which can be fired from the you know config can be configured so these are created updated expired removed evicted so these are the events and then uh, the re under resources we will be setting up the heap size so heap size says like, uh, like how many entries can be there in the uh, heap uh, so we are setting it as 2000 and the unit as 100 MB. So these are some basic configurations which are present in the uh, on that site also. So we can refer it from there. And now we are going to create the custom cache event logger. It's uh, nothing but a simple uh, event listener. So whenever some event happens, so this particular class will be invoked, and it will log those events. Okay, and uh, for uh, for logging purpose, uh, now uh, we are uh, using Lombox uh, at the rate SLF4J annotation. What this annotation does is it creates uh, out of the box uh, logger for us, and uh, I mean to remove the to remove the uh, boilerplate code, we are doing this. And uh, what we are doing here is we are on event uh, cache event listener is having. Uh, that is having on event uh, on event uh, method which we are overriding and uh, we are simply getting the uh, blog object from there and showing some data from there so that's it and uh, configuration part so we are uh, having uh, we are enabling the add configuration and add, add enable caching there those annotations and then this blog service uh, with where we are actually we are actually going to have a hash map uh, again for testing purpose we are going to have a hash map and giving it as a name as database so this hash map would be having few values and we will be hard coding those values uh, since it is a testing uh, simulator so we will be simply having these hard coded values but in real life this will be this would be replaced by a real data source and you know all the logic for fetching that data and all will would go here so now we we are going to have a method called get uh, blog by id uh, same as previous and now here we are adding the add cacheable and we need to provide the same cache name which we have provided while uh, creating the cache in eh cache.xml so we are give, saying the name as blog cache and uh, we yeah that's pretty much about it uh, and now we are going to have a controller the controller class will be simply uh, having one endpoint that is nothing but blog blog uh, slash id so that we are going to have here we are uh, going to annotate with rest controller and we are uh, adding the cache manager so cache manager is when we actually uh, suppose if we don't want to use annotations so eh cache uh, and spring provides this uh, mechanism wherein without uh, using the annotations we can do the caching i mean putting the things into the cache and uh, fetching the things from there so one endpoint we will be writing for that uh, also i mean we are going to have one endpoint which is which will be uh, for just for that purpose so this endpoint we are having get block by id 
and uh, the the endpoint uh, URL would be blog slash ID. And uh, again, since uh, we have the hard coded values, so ID uh, will be just to you know print here uh, to print the values in the console. Uh, and ID would be anyway would be one or two only, since uh, that is what is hard coded in the you know in the hash map. So yes, so that's pretty much about it. So we are going to use cache manager here. Uh, and cache manager uh, dot get cache would uh, tell us uh, that there we need to pass the cache name that is nothing but again blog cache and uh, uh, cache dot put will actually put the you know put one particular uh, object there with the id into the cache and uh, we are uh, returning that whatever value has been put there we are simply fetching that and showing on the screen so that's what these two endpoints are and now uh, once it is done we will restart the server and we will check how it behaves so we are adding adding some basic sysouts uh, you know to show the differences uh, like when it will load from the database and when uh, it will load from the uh, cache so for that for that purpose we are adding the you know sysouts several sysouts and once it is done we will bounce back the server so let's let's start the server and see if everything is fine so server is starting up it's building the project and uh, it, it will take a while So guys, the error seems to be the invalid name of the XML file which we have given. So uh, we are we are copying and refactoring the name of that uh, ehcache.xml, and then we are restarting that uh, by bouncing back the server. And uh, this hopefully this should, error should go away now. So yes, error is not uh, there now. So we are trying to going to hit it again. And now, as you can see, where once we are hitting the uh, blog slash one or blog cell blog slash two on console, we can see uh, first time it is uh, going to hit from the uh, hash map, going to get from the hash map, and second time onwards, it is uh, fetching from the cache only. And uh, So now we are trying with uh, another endpoint that is add uh, add to cache. So add to cache and we are passing ID. So that ID we are assigning to the object and we will be uh, setting that object into cache and uh, printing that object again. So that's what we are going to do with uh, this URL and we are trying to hit that. Uh, so uh, once it is done, so on console it will print uh, the blog items. So yeah, as we can see here it is showing the with id it is showing the uh, creating the object blog object and printing it here in, on the console and this we are doing through cache manager uh, and uh, cache uh, object so that's pretty much about it for today's session hopefully you enjoyed this session please leave your comments uh, in the comment section So soon we will create another uh, any another topic uh, Spring Boot topic and uh, until then uh, bye bye and don't forget uh, thanks for watching and don't forget to like share and subscribe our work and uh, please 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 provide your feedback bye bye and have a nice life.